Well, hello there, and welcome to a new video. Today we are continuing a series that you seem to enjoy if judging by the amount of views and likes. So I am providing you with the fourth part of my series of tips and tricks. Please make sure to give some love to the other parts if you haven't done already. Also, please make sure to subscribe, we are closing up on a thousand subscribers and that would be awesome. Act clever against tanks that you want to blow up and that use high explosive ammo to kill you around certain areas. The best thing you can do to avoid being blasted by enemy tanks is to wait for them to shoot at you and while they are loading the next round, pick with your bazooka. While they are blasting, stay in safe areas that can be easily blasted and time your attack correctly. If you are ever in the unfortunate place to have a speeding vehicle coming towards you, don't panic because I got a solution. If you try to avoid it or jump before it reaches you, you are doomed to die as the driver will easily steer onto you. What you need to do is slightly move to the side like shown at the last moment. This way the driver thinks he has an easy kill but you will act otherwise. So go out there and dribble them. Use this column in almost every attic to avoid the grenade blast. Stay behind it while someone is throwing nades at you and use both sides if needed. This will confuse them to think that no one is up there and you will probably get easy kills by them climbing inside or they will never be able to get you out of there if you play it correctly. Don't place your bazooka on number one of your equipment slots. This is because these kinds of weapons shouldn't be dropped for enemies to pick up. It's especially dangerous and you should not give your enemies the opportunity to use it against your own armor. So in case you die with it, the enemies won't be able to pick it up. If you are certain that a specific vehicle will either get out of spawn radius, gets destroyed, or the seat gets taken before you are able to click it once to choose it, and then once more to spawn in it, you can try to double click on it. This will ensure that you will definitely spawn, but one of the two will happen. You will either get a slow camera pan that slows you spawning in and during which you can't act but you can surely die, or you will get this perfect fast spawn that is so satisfying. There is no actual way to determine what will happen, so do it at your own risk. If you want to spawn in a vehicle of your own after you have spawned in an allied APC, you need to choose your vehicle again from this bar or otherwise it will spawn you on foot if you forget. Keep that in mind because I have done that mistake and had to redeploy many times. Always do your APC driver a favor of checking for mines before the APC crosses passages and paths that are usually mined. The most clever place to plant mines is in the water because it's almost impossible to blow them up by shooting at them, but I got a nice trick for you. That is to use your grenades and see all the mines you previously couldn't shoot at blow into pieces. Because I see people still be annoyed by others blowing up their mines because they think it's enemy ones, I want to clear out that friendly mines have this little sign over them. So be careful not to run them over, don't blow them up, but truly shoot at enemy mines if you see them on the road. Armored APCs are surely so important and actually quite strong. They got a disadvantage though that will immobilize them easily. When the driver drives it away from gunfire and especially on a slope, hill or generally a part of the terrain that causes it to be in this angle, enemies can shoot him. So drivers, watch out for this and infantry guys, use this to your advantage. If you are lucky enough to become a squad leader, you can of course give orders. Well, what if I told you that you could use the rally order meter counter to adjust your scope sights or the shots of your bazooka? Just simply use Q to get this meter out and aim exactly where you want. This way you can exactly know where to aim and how much to adjust it. So no, the auto adjuster by pressing space isn't enough because it only allows you to go up a certain distances and you don't get a great idea of how much to adjust. If you're a sniper or an infantry guy using bolt action rifles or scoped starters and you want to climb a hill or generally get to your camp spot, remember this one rule. Leave your bike somewhere that will ring no bells when someone is looking for you. I always leave my bike a bit far away and walk to my final position. Now when looking for an enemy sniper, I am always looking for the bike that will give me an idea of his position. 
One of the most camped main points is O2 in the map town. The design of the surrounding layout allows spawn campers to abuse you from many spots because of how exposed you are. Be careful for people camping in this and this structure, the roof and window of the church, this AA gun nest and even this fence. I know, it's really bad. When covering behind a vehicle, a tree or generally anything that is in the building, watch out for your exposed limbs. When your team manages to get across in map town in lines B and C, where a neutralization provides your team with a spawn point across bridges that are otherwise hard to cross, spawn a car or a bike with sidecar. This way, even if your team loses the spawn point, some teammates have the chance to spawn in your vehicle that can carry many of them and still cross the hard part this way. You might as well leave it near the spawn, so the radius is ideal for the most time possible. If you see this thing over a vehicle, it means that somebody is unlocking it. If it's a teammate, everything's okay, but if you don't see any name tags, an enemy is on the other side and you should probably end them right there and then. Some of the recon armor vehicles or infantry ones have the gunner's or driver's head exposed when he is shooting or driving. It's a hard shot, but it's definitely easy enough to hit if you try your best. When in a battle and the opposite team has planes, please be careful. Especially in the start of the battle, where you know that planes will come for you in the first point you are capturing, get inside or at least don't stand in the middle of the point like a fool, because something like this will happen. You can jump this fence on the defender's side of E4 spawn in map town. This will save you some valuable time in reaching E4 now that it has moved across the river. A great tip is to also be patient in situations that require you to. For example, on a map of capture and hold where there are only three points and each one is especially crucial, you need to have patience. I know it's boring to just wait for the enemies, but believe me, action will come soon. Also, if you are the last person to leave it, your team risks losing and never being able to get it back after enemies fortify it. Speaking of patience and at the same time showing you O2 of Village Kermis, I wanna point out that this is the way to rat out a camper that just holds the O2 attic all the time. You're welcome if you didn't know. Now a bonus one. During the winter slash snow slash ice slash Christmas or whatever update is still on, don't be a fool and use the iced out lakes and rivers as shortcuts. Well, that's pretty much it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Give the other part some love and stay tuned for more. Thank you and bye bye.